Uh, this is question four now from the June 2010 BY1 paper. Um, it's uh, an immobilized enzyme question now. Um, question three um, was actually a, a question on enzyme activity. Um, so in this particular uh, paper now, you've actually got two separate uh, questions on, on enzymes. All right, so we're looking at um, uh, immobilized enzymes here. Okay, and uh, if I read out the, uh, the statement then, uh, the presence of glucose in a person's urine is an indication of diabetes. Uh, glucose can be detected by placing into a sample of urine a colored plastic strip containing the immobilized enzyme glucose oxidase. The strip changes color if glucose is present. Okay, um, so basically as I as I brought out in, in the notes I've produced, uh, there are two ways of actually using immobilized enzymes to measure uh, or detect the presence of a particular molecule. Okay, uh, so this question is starting off by looking at this um, uh, colored strip. It's often called a clinistic actually. Um, so if I pull up the uh, the notes that I've done for this particular uh, clinistic way of measuring glucose concentration, okay, uh, it is simply a, a plastic strip where the immobilized enzymes are on the bottom of the strip, if you can, uh, can see there with the red arrow, okay. So I've mentioned about glucose oxidase. In reality, there is another enzyme on that strip called peroxidase. Okay, um, but but the exam question is is only talking about glucose oxidase. So you do need to know or have an appreciation of this method of measuring um, uh, the or, or detecting the presence of glucose. Uh, the main bulk really. Um, for this section is to know about a, a digital biosensor but you do need to know uh, about these these color change methods for detecting um, glucose concentration okay if uh, if we go back to uh, the exam question okay um, so it's starting off uh, for two marks um, you'll always be asked this really on a question on immobilized enzymes you're asked to describe two advantages of using immobilized enzymes again all you have to do is commit to memory uh, several advantages of using bio uh, sorry of using immobilized enzymes um, again they can be re reused um, they've got greater stability they're more um, uh, resistant to higher temperatures and extremes of pH all right, uh, they can be reused. All right, we've we've covered this before in other um, immobilized enzyme questions. Okay, so all you need to do is type in um, two uh, advantages there. Okay, so I've just decided to put in uh, they can be reused and they have a greater stability at higher temperatures. All right. Uh, moving on then to part two, uh, explain why this diagnostic method is not suitable for the accurate measurement of the concentration of glucose in urine. Um, basically, this, this method involves, um, a, as we've said earlier, a colour change occurring. Okay, uh, so basically when you get a colour change, you don't actually have an exact concentration value for the glucose in the urine all right it just gives you an indication of whether there's a lot of glucose there or whether there's uh, a low level of glucose there so if i pull up uh, my notes again you can see that uh, down the bottom you've got the color chart um, that comes with these um, uh, glucose measuring strips and all you've got is negative light medium and dark okay that gives you no real measurement of glucose concentration it just, it just tells you uh, whether there's a lot present or whether there's no none present okay um, so the other problem with using this color change chart is that it's very subjective okay if you've got a strip with um, 
a pad on the end of it that's actually changed colour. How do you decide whether it's a light value or a medium value? Uh, it's, it's what's known as a subjective measurement, okay, where it's up to personal preference whether you decide whether, for example, the, the colour has gone to light or medium. My, my interpretation may be a light colour, but yours may have been a medium. All right, so there's lots of scope there for inaccuracies um, in deciding the exact nature of the colour change. Okay, um, this type of um, measurement, um, as I've mentioned here, is a qualitative measurement. All right, and they are generally not the best ways to make measurements in science because you do not have a numerical value. You haven't got a concentration value that you can quote. All right, so um, they're not particularly good ways to uh, to, to measure uh, levels of glucose. Okay, uh, what you want, of course, is a quantitative measurement. All right, uh, they're the best ways to measure things in science, uh, but you cannot do that with these um, uh, strips. Okay, right. Um, so let's type that answer in. Uh, there's uh, there's my answer there, and I've said. Uh, the result produced is only a colour change, which is a qualitative measurement rather than a quantitative uh, measurement. Okay, uh, make sure you uh, get those terms the right way around. They look very similar um, in uh, in their spelling there. Okay, um, a qualitative measurement does not give you a numerical value for the concentration of glucose in the urine. And interpretation of the colour change is subjective. All right, it's very much up to the individual uh, and their uh, interpretation of the colour change. Okay, so it's it's not particularly good uh, at all. Okay, right, part B. Here we go. This is uh, this is the biosensor now. Okay, so another method used to measure glucose involves the use of a biosensor. The diagram below shows an enzyme electrode from a glucose biosensor okay so there are numerous ways to draw out a biosensor okay and uh, you've just got to sort of understand that if you look at uh, different exam papers you'll get used to the different styles of drawing these uh, these biosensors okay in this particular one they've actually got uh, a gel layer now where you have your immobilized glucose oxidase okay uh, that gel sits on a plastic membrane okay and then uh, the examiner has just mentioned you've got electrodes sensitive to changes in product concentration okay uh, the product concentration of course is the product uh, produced by the enzyme glucose oxidase okay uh, for the glucose oxidase to work it does actually need oxygen and that's why that oxygen is coming in to the gel layer okay um, so uh, that's uh, one other way of representing a uh, biosensor there okay uh, question uh, one then explain what is meant by the term uh, biosensor okay it's basically a device that uh, an electronic device then that can measure uh, the concentration of a, of a particular substance okay and it measures it by converting it into uh, a, an, a chemi a, an electrical signal so it converts a chemical product okay which comes from the, uh, the, the enzyme within the biosensor so that produces a chemical and that chemical is then converted into um, electrical uh, signals and then that of course is converted into a uh, digital uh, readout okay there's uh, there's my answer then I've said uh, that uh, it's an electronic device that can measure the concentration of a substance by converting the chemical product from the enzyme catalyzed reaction into electrical signals that can be displayed as a numerical value on a digital screen okay um, I think that's a, a good thorough answer there okay the important points are 
is that it, ca it can measure the concentration of a substance by converting chemical products into electrical signals. Okay. Right. Uh, moving on to uh, the next part. Describe the function of the enzyme. Well, uh, the enzyme uh, is is vital to the functioning of a biosensor. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's what makes a biosensor highly specific because enzymes, as you know, only bind to one particular substrate. Okay, That's why each biosensor will have a particular enzyme in it. The biosensor in this question is measuring glucose levels, so you have to have the enzyme glucose oxidase because that can actually bind to, uh, to glucose. So what the actual enzyme does is, well, it does what an enzyme does. Okay, it just uh, binds uh, with the substrate. In this case, the substrate is glucose. Okay, um, the substrate binds to the active site. Okay, and it produces a product. All right, so it's just a basic description of what enzymes do. You don't need to go into any other detail about enzymes here. Okay, it's only worth two marks. You've only got three lines to write it in. All right, so as long as you show the examiner that you understand how enzymes work, so you must mention substrate binds to the active site to produce a product. That's what enzymes do. Okay, so uh, I've just typed uh, an answer in there. The substrate will bind to the enzyme's active site and will be converted uh, into a product. All right, simple as that. Okay, uh, last part of the uh, the question now. Describe how this biosensor can be used to measure blood glucose concentration. Uh, it's worth four marks, okay? Um, so you just really have to describe uh, how it works um, in the in the few lines that you've got. Um, basically, if we uh, if we scroll up to to the diagram of this uh, biosensor, okay. The first thing to, to mention, of course, is um, the glucose, uh, which is present um, in either blood or urine, okay, the glucose, of course, has to get into that gel, because that's where the glucose oxidase is, all right? Uh, so you can say that the glucose uh, diffuses in. Don't just say the glucose goes into the gel. You've got to be a bit more scientific about it, all right? Uh, so the glucose will diffuse into that gel, okay, and um, it will actually then bind uh, to the glucose oxidase and uh, will be converted uh, into a uh, product, all right. Now, for the glucose oxidase to work, um, it does actually need oxygen, okay, so it does actually have oxygen and glucose, uh, and it uses those two then to actually convert glucose into uh, into its products, okay. Um, what happens after that, of course, is the uh, the product that's produced is then converted into uh, electrical signals. Now, you do need to remember the part of the biosensor that converts the chemical products into the um, electrical signals, and that's the that's the transducer. Okay, so the transducer converts the chemical product of the uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction into electrical signals okay and uh, the other thing then that you can mention is uh, something that I've brought up uh, in the notes so I'm going to bring my my notes up now and uh, highlight uh, this important part here okay that term uh, directly proportional to the glucose concentration is a term that I've used uh, several times. I've used it here with this color change uh, biosensor, uh, but I've also mentioned it uh, further down uh, in the notes, okay, where uh, I have the transducer, okay. I've mentioned that the electrical signals are directly proportional to the original molecule concentration in the blood. That's really, really important to remember. That's how this transducer and, and biosensor overall works. The higher the concentration 
uh, of a substance, glucose in the case of this question, the greater the electrical signal produced. And that's what I mean by directly proportional. OK, uh, so that's something that uh, is certainly important uh, to bring out in your answer. Often one that people forget about, but um, it, it's an important one to remember. OK, um, so I think I've mentioned all the, the important points here about how uh, the biosensor works. OK, so let's uh, type an answer in. OK, um, I've written my answer in there and I've just said the glucose will diffuse into the gel uh, containing <coughs> typo, uh, containing the immobilized glucose oxidase. The glucose will bind to the active site of the enzyme and will be converted into uh, the product. OK, um, uh, the amount of product produced will be directly proportional to the glucose concentration. I thought I'd add that in. I think that's quite an important point to put in. Okay, so you've got uh, a certain concentration of glucose in the blood. The product or the concentration of the product produced is equivalent to the concentration of glucose. All right, so just link those two facts together. OK, so then I've gone on to uh, look at the electrical signal and I've said the product will then be converted into an electrical signal by the transducer. The size of this electrical signal then will be directly proportional to the glucose concentration. All right. Uh, so I think that's a, a pretty reasonable uh, answer there. Um, if we now just have a quick uh, look through the uh, marking scheme. OK. Uh, I don't think there's too much issues with uh, the marking scheme here. OK, so you can see question A there about the advantages of um, immobilized enzymes. Again, th there's far more advantages than is actually listed there. But um, OK, uh, talking about the color change then, uh, it's subjective. It can only indicate if it's present or, or absent. It can't. Uh, state exactly the concentration of the uh, the substance and um, it's uh, qualitative rather than quantitative okay part B then you know what is uh, a biosensor well it measures um, the metabolite or name substance there okay so uh, a metabolite is just something that uh, undergoes uh, a, a reaction okay and it uh, converts chemical signals into electrical signals there. OK. Uh, part B2 then is basically the function of the, the enzymes. OK. Nothing uh, unusual there. And lastly, um, we have some points there about the uh, description of how a biosensor uh, works. OK. So I've said that one. OK. Glucose from blood diffuses into gel. Um, I've mentioned that when the examiner has said acted on by glucose oxidase. Well, I prefer to say that the glucose binds to the active site of the glucose oxidase. I've said the amount of product released is proportional to glucose concentration. Um, and I've said that electrical signals are being generated. I've also put in that it's the transducer that does that. Uh, there isn't a mark in this marking scheme for mentioning transducer but I still think you should be thorough in your answers you never know what the examiner is going to find acceptable um, for each particular question okay mark schemes do change year on year in year out all right so the more relevant information you can put in the better okay and I've also said the size uh, of the electrical signal um, is uh, proportional to the concentration of the product. I think I mentioned that the examiner has said mass of product. Uh, I don't think that would cause um, a loss of mark there if you said concentration of product. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So that's uh, that's the end of uh, the question four. I hope you found that useful.